Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. I'm sure you're very curious about the title of this video. So let me explain. <laughs> All right, I'll get to that in a second. The first thing I wanna to talk to you about is what I'm gonna be using for this video. So I'm gonna be pulling out these Arteza metallic watercolors. Uh, Arteza sent these to me to try out and um, anything watercolor, you know, it's have, I have a hard time resisting. And then you throw metallics on top of that, forget about it. So I said yes, and I'm gonna test them out today and play with them. It's gonna be a lot of fun. They give you these really cool swatch charts in a black watercolor cardstock and a white watercolor cardstock. I thought that was really cool. And so here they are all swatched out onto those two pieces of paper. So I really, love the differences that you get from the black to the white. It's really cool. Obviously, you can see on the black watercolor cardstock, they're much more vibrant. So it's kind of what they're intended for. So let's talk about my title. Here is a piece of artwork that AJ was tasked to do this week for art class. I was so inspired by the project. They wanted him to grab up a, I'm using black watercolor cardstock for this project, by the way. Um, but they wanted him to grab up any object in the house whatsoever, and they're gonna he's gonna trace it on a piece of paper multiple times and overlap it, sort of like an abstract art. And we did that, and we had so much fun. We were coloring together. We were both using this um, magic eraser type shape that we were using, and it was so fun. Of course, my husband off to the side was using a deck of cards on his big piece of paper, and it came out amazing. I didn't show a picture of that, but it was really cool. So I decided to put my stamps aside for the day and just have fun with shapes of all kinds. So here I'm pulling out the bottom of this wine glass and I am just making circles. This is probably one of the easiest things I've ever done and the most fun I've ever had. When I realized doing, during this whole project, when I overthink, um, it takes away some of the joy. So this was really fun. Now, next thing I pulled out on the black watercolor cardstock was this little Hero Arts mini ink cube. I have this little ink cube for my shape because it was the closest thing to me. That is the only reason. Um, I wanted something that wasn't circular and I saw this and I grabbed it and that's why we are using it. <laughs> so I used a pencil and I'm gonna trace that all over my black watercolor cardstock. So I get the shape I want here. I'm just, this is, this is winging it at its finest. I was inspired by my son's first grade art homework and I just said, go with it. And so that is what we're doing. You'll see, um, and I will share with you along the way, my confidence gets shaken quite a bit <laughs> as we go through this process. There were times where I was like, yeah, this is going in the blooper reel. Uh, but I kept at it, and I want to show you how I worked through that process. So I am going to start off this part right here. Um, I am picking random colors. I chose sort of the lighter of the colors, uh, pinks, purples, light teals, blue, yellow, things like that. I didn't go for anything too harsh. Um, and I first started the technique with dropping the water, making the circle wet, and then dropping in the color. Now, this was... It worked at first because it was fun, but it didn't, as I was going through, it did not give me the saturation of color that I wanted to overlap one another. And so you'll notice as you watch this coloring process happen throughout this, towards the end, I would say, of this card, I use a lot less water. So I go in sort of with just a little bit of a damp brush and pick up some of that paint. Um, the paint has a little bit of water in it, but the brush does not. And I am just going to start painting more, making it look more opaque. That happens near the end. What I'm doing now is I'm just filling up my circles with some color. Now, a couple tips along the way here, which I think might help you. Um, and you might know a lot more about watercolor than I do because I'm just now starting out to really figure out how to make it work for me. Um, up until this point, I think I would just let all the watercolor do whatever it wanted, not realizing that certain techniques could offer a lot more control if you do them. So here, for one, you want to make sure that the other colors are dried. That was one thing. If you're overlapping colors like this, it helps to start with the other color being dried. The second tip that I would say is when you know you're gonna overlap colors, color in the white part first 
and then go through each section at a time. When you start mixing all the colors together, like I'm, let's say I'm dragging my brush from the pinks into where the yellow overlaps, I'm, I have a potential to get mud. And one thing great about watercolor, you see what I'm doing here is it's very forgiving. So I went around and wet the areas where I went outside the line and then picked that back up. So that was very forgiving. I realized at this point I need to heat set this. Um, I can wait for it to dry, but I'm not going to. I also let that blue bleed into the yellow far too much. And so I went and picked up most of that and I'll come back to that once it's dry. So again, you want to make sure that you're um, your areas are dry if you're going to cross into them. And then I would recommend crossing into them one at a time. Keep your brush into the crossed over part of the circle, just purely there, then wipe off your brush and then go back in and um, touch the rest of it. So here I did the yellow first. This is what I'm talking about. Then I went in and I crossed into that area, right? But I did not bring it back into the full piece of yellow without wiping it off first. That way I can get the mix inside those little areas of circle. So now I can get a green inside where the blue and yellow mix. This is all making a ton of sense in my head. <laughs> so I have no idea if it's making sense for you, but I'm gonna heat set this some more and you're just gonna um, watch me kind of add more color. And like I said, I use a lot less water soon. The camera is not doing it justice right now. These colors are beautifully pearlescent. They are metallic. They're so, so pretty. They really show that on the black watercolor cardstock that you'll see in a little bit. Um, here it's hard to see them, but it they actually are. So in real life, and I'm going to show you a close up at the end of this when I finish up with this card, you're going to be able to see a lot of that um, shine and pearlescent look. So I'm going to keep going through and you can kind of watch as I um, share some stories about what's happening around. So um, been staying home a lot. <laughs> as I'm sure everyone is, staying home a lot. Um, there's a lot of Lego showcasing that I have been um, blessed with. My son, if nothing else, he may be behind in math, but I'll tell you, his Lego game is going to be picked up 10 notches. He builds Legos for hours out of the day. We do a little bit of schoolwork in the morning. I'm gonna start sitting side saddle with him during school, it's about an hour total um, of actual computer work and then we work together on all the other things he has to do. But um, because I just feel like he needs a little bit more hands-on. But the other times he is um, playing with his sister or playing Legos and he I see it's hard for me because I, I think it's because he's really, really good at it. And so I, but I'm also aware that I might be a little biased. <laughs> That's that I am aware of. Um, real quick on the card, you see the color overlap now when you do that. So I'm using a lot less water and I can start to see this card actually come to life. It's really, really fun to do this card. Okay. So yeah, so AJ is just killing the Lego game. Um, also, side note, did you know that Lego, the plural of Lego is Lego? <laughs> that was a little piece of information I had no idea about. We were watching Lego Master on Hulu, I think it is. And that was in the first episode. And it is called like, le like, I'm going to go play with all my Lego. That's how you appropriately say that. I had no idea. And try to break me of that habit. I don't know. I'm trying to show respect to the company, but it's this is a tough one. It's hard to change. Okay, what else am I doing here? Um, Adia is doing well. She got a couple more online books that she gets to read. She's very excited about that. Um, she is a reader. I wish I was a reader like her. I'm not. Um, I wish, it's not that I don't have time. I think you have time for anything you want to do and you make a priority, but I just have other things that I want to do ahead of reading that give me more peace of mind and joy, i.e. playing with paint. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe if I had a plethora of time, I might choose to read more because I have a lot of books in my queue in my mental queue and in my bookshelf queue. There's a lot of books that I have to read. Namingly, my sister's books. 
<laughs> because she's my sister and she's an author and she I want to read all her books. I just it's hard. It's hard to do all the things. What are some things that you want to do that if you had an overabundance of time, you would certainly do them because they seem interesting to you. But if you have to choose between that and crafting and maybe eating a meal and working, <laughs> you have to choose. I don't know. Okay, I'm curious about that. So here I went in and I drew black lines around these circles. Would I have done the same thing over again? I don't know. Maybe if I do this card again, I'll do it without the black circles and then I'll be able to have one of each. Here I'm just showing you how versatile this background is because I'm putting down all different kinds of sentiments and they all look good. So I just wanted to show you that in the video. I did opt to go for this one. It says you can do anything. And then the subset sentiment, I believe says, I wanna be like you, I wanna be more like you, something like that, which I think is so, so cute. The um, You Can Do Anything, I think, is from Neat and Tangled. And then the sub-sentiment is from Tailored Expressions. One day I hope to be like you. Oh, I think that's so cute. Um, there's imperfections around those black lines. And I don't give a hoot. I love this card. And I that did not bother me at all. Um, I It's probably because I was shifting my um, glass when I was doing the black lines. So don't do that. Don't shift. All right, let's move on to the second card, which is a lot more similar to my son's in that the shape is more similar. Okay, I am going to paint with the, again, with the metallics from Arteza. And I am, um, I started off with two similar colors. Now, don't do, just don't do this. I did not swatch my colors before I painted with them. And how shame on me because I am always telling you to swatch out your colors because it makes your process so much easier. I can't tell you why. I think I was just so excited to get in here and do this project. And the fact that I didn't swatch them did not by any means ruin my project. It just, I would have saved a couple steps because here you can see these top two colors are actually, the top three are actually different colors. Um, but I found that they were too similar. So I went back at the end when it was all dried and I added some different colors to it. So, which is fine, you know, but those were silver or whitish looking. So you can cover those with anything. It was perfectly fine, but I'm going to heat set this one. I kind of learned my lesson from the first card, um, that I didn't really have or want to take the time to wait for it to dry in between. So I am just going to go. Now I did take my lesson from the first one and you see how I'm just coloring in the black first, um, sorry, the yellow on the black first, then I'm gonna go in and cross over those colors because again, I do not want to make it just one big swipe of color. Watercolors will react and you know, basically um, wet back up, if you will, <laughs> and they will be able to be shifted around. So you just wanna be aware of that when you're doing your coloring. Um, so you can see I'm just going through here. I do skip quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to skip on to uh, when this is almost done here. And I'm going to go back in with some of those colors and add up um, the top ones when I, when I decide how I'm going to fill in these last two squares. So this was, yeah, this was fun. Uh, all right, what else is going on in life? Um, work is busy. Um, I am still trying to work out as much as possible. I am trying to uh, decompress at the end of the day. You know what I find interesting about working from home is there is no separation from your work and your home. So I want to share a message with all those parents out there that might have to have this challenge of still working, blessed to still be working by far. But if you are working from home, I think that one thing we need to do is give ourselves a little bit of grace because I realized something at home. I always have mom guilt. You know, that's just something I'll never get rid of because I always want to spend more time with the kids and whatnot. But it's it's exasperated here. And the reason is because I'm I see them every day. When I'm at work, I'm focused at work. And I don't really think about the things I have to do at home while I'm at work. I'm thinking about work. 
So when I'm on a call and it's a pretty, you know, if it's high tense call or something like that, and my son comes down and all he wants to do is show me something and I have to tell him like, you know, quietly, like I can't even say it out loud. I have to motion to him like, no, go upstairs. It breaks my heart a little bit every time, you know, because I know he tries to understand, but it's hard because he's just not used to, he's excited that I'm home, that I'm in the house. And yet I'm still inaccessible during certain times. So that's a new challenge that I think, you know, those of us that are working from home and have little kids can maybe relate to. And I just want to remind myself and us to give ourselves grace over that because we're just doing the best we can. You know, we're just when you can make up for it, make up for it. Or maybe I don't sit down here that extra 15 minutes and read those 10 more emails and maybe I just go upstairs, you know, so it's just just all doing our best. Okay, back to the card. Now I'm taking my white gel pen. This is a Milky Pop pen. Uh, works really well. And I'm going to outline all of my squares. I'm going to kind of define them a little bit more. Before I started doing this, I looked at this card. And this is one of the cards where I was just like, this is just <laughs> resembling a first grader's artwork. <laughs> But I said, just, you know, keep going. I think I can do something with this. I think I can clean it up a little bit. And so I decided to outline all the squares. And then on half of the squares, I went in with the gel pen and I made these little dash lines. Dash lines are like magic. They clean up a project. And I haven't used dash lines in a very long time. But they really help make a project look intentional. I guess that's the best way I can say it. Um, not so sloppy, so a little bit neater. Uh, you can straighten out some things with illusion with a dash line, even if your dash line isn't perfect. So I found that that was a really nice addition to this card. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add little dots. Some are bigger than others, just little dots all around this card. Um, I have no idea what inspired me to do that. I just thought that would be kind of fun. The white gel pen works so well, it was going to be nice to see those little pops of white all over my card. So that's the, the next thing I did with this card. And then like the other one, a lot of sentiments would have went really well on this card. Um, but I opted to go for a sentiment I have in my stash. And it says thinking of you because I I could have picked any occasion for this card, but I want more um, thinking of you cards because I'm going to send them out during this time. And so I thought that was nice. Also, this is very gender neutral and I always need more of those in my stash as well. So I'm going to um, put my thinking of you down. This is with some white glitter or shimmer paper and I'm going to put back on the, um, the eye dots. There's a name for those. <laughs> Everyone know the name? Yes, that's right. They're tittles. That's what they're called. So I'm going to put those back on. And um, that will do it for these two cards. And this um, artwork inspired by first grade assignments. Thank you so much for hanging out. If you want to check out these Arteza metallic watercolors, I'll put the link below. You can check them out as well. And I hope this inspired you to realize you don't need all the things in all the world. You can just pull out some stuff you have laying around and make some artwork. Thanks so much again for hanging out with me. I will see you in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And on the screen, you'll see a couple more videos that might be of interest to you. I wish you all a wonderful week. Stay healthy, stay safe. Bye-bye.